to call the City of Las Vegas Art Commission together December 19th, 2013. Uh, let's see. Let me read below. Items listed on the agenda may be taken out of order. Presented two or more agenda items for consideration may be combined and any item of the agenda may be removed or related discussion may be delayed at any time. Backup materials for this agenda may be obtained from Beverly City Clerk at the City Clerk's Office at South Main Street, second floor. Uh, therefore, I'm formally call order. I'd like to have the clerk do a roll call. Yes. And we have Chair Grogan. Yes, here. Vice Chair Noah. Here. And then we have Commissioner McCoy. Here. Commissioner Epstein. Excuse. Commissioner Smith. Excuse. Commissioner Diener. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Denton. Excuse. Uh, Commissioner Shevsik. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Snyder. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Alvarez. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Michaels. Excuse. And Commissioner Friedman. Excuse. Thank you. Are we in compliance with the open meeting law? Yes, we are. I'd like to read the following. Public comment during the portion of the agenda must be limited to matters on the agenda for action. If you wish to be heard, give your name for the record. The amount of discussion as well as the amount of time any single speaker is allowed may be limited. Uh, do we have anybody today in the public audience that wishes to speak to any agenda item? Yes, yes we do. Can you give your name? My name is Sandra Ward, W-A-R-D. Okay. You need that spelled? Yes. Sandra, S-A-N-D-R-A. Thank you. Okay. Is, it, uh, is there any specific agenda item you wish to speak to, or would you like to defer to the end of the meeting? She's going to speak to the Charleston Heights item. Okay. Oh, very good. Okay. When we get there, we'll draw attention to you. Okay. Please. Moving on with the agenda, uh, possible action for to approve the final minutes by reference of the regular meeting of November 21st. Has everybody had a chance to review this? And excuse me, Chair Grogan. Yes. And unfortunately, uh, staff had informed me we would need to obey those uh, minutes and abeyance until the next meeting as staff is still making changes to them. Please. Okay. Therefore, since we've been informed, we shall hold the, these minutes <coughs> in abeyance until the next scheduled regular meeting. Is that acceptable to all members of the commission? Hearing no objections, we'll hold it in abeyance. Um, now we have uh, a report from the chair, which is myself, regarding monthly summary of current initiatives, cultural events, and opportunities. I'd like to defer that to our PR meeting when we get to that, which we had previous to this meeting. But I would like to wish all the commission members and people in the audience, as well as city officials, a happy holidays and an upcoming happy new year. Just want to let you know. I might as well point out that uh, Christmas lights on city buildings is also a form of art. So, <laughs> Anybody else have any uh, comments on events happening around the city that we should be aware of from any other commission members that's upcoming during the holiday season prior to our next meeting in January? Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, moving on to number six, discussion regarding holding more than one sub subcommittee meeting per month. No physical impact, all wards. I think we've had this discussion earlier that we are trying to get our subcommittees where we might overlap or we get them more active. That's the goal, is to have our commissioners get more active. Uh, Commissioner Diener, did you have a comment? Yes, I do have a comment. I have been in dialogue with the city clerk's office to see at the last commission meeting um, it looked like we, and speaking just on behalf of the Education Committee, would only be able to meet once every couple of months for 30 minutes and could have no contact in between those months. Mm -hmm. So it became apparent to me that we wouldn't be able to get any work done. So I did email the City Clerk's Office to see if there would be any way that we could at least have a committee meeting every two weeks and if they could just put them on their calendar every two weeks, there would be a standing committee meeting slotted for the Arts Commission. PR committee and Education committee could at least meet once a month then. And um, last time I heard, Beverly was working on trying to accommodate that. But I, I do have a question because this is where I was confused with last month's meeting. Can we disseminate information amongst the committee members 
just if somebody has something of interest to share with the education committee members, and I'm assuming it would work for all the committees, could they just email all the committee members? Let me jump in here. Um, that's why I'm here for this meeting. Yeah. Uh, the, um, the open meeting law <clears throat> really frowns upon anything that resembles a meeting. So clearly you can't meet without publicly noticing it, posting it, and, and having it in a public uh, facility. You also can't do anything that looks deliberative. You can't do anything that looks like you're trying to reach a conclusion or build a consensus. Those are kind of slippery concepts. And so it's kind of, can we distribute information to each of you? Sure. You know, we can give you each, you know, we gave you the agenda. We gave you the backup material. Can we encourage you to take that material then and communicate with each other by email? Absolutely not. That begins to begin a deliberative process. And you never want to be on the investigative end of this. Because under Nevada law, a violation of the open media law is not only a crime, it's investigated by the Attorney General's office. I've been here long enough to have been through several of those investigations. Fortunately, they all turned out favorably. But uh, if there is a violation found, it's not only a misdemeanor, but it's mandatory removal from office. So I, I have to really be firm in the advice on this, that if, if again, information is distributed equally to all of you, you can consider it, you can review it, that sharing your thoughts with other committee members right. or subcommittee members is forbidden. So the question to that then, if I, let's just say I had, because I mean there's several things that, you know, Lisa asked all the committee members to give information, some of them did, and so now I've got one of them, in, let's just say on Downtown Achieves, let's say there was a page on Downtown Achieves that would be good for the education being to read. Could I, if I got that page, send it out to the education committee? Or do I have to give it to the staff person to give it to the education committee at the regularly scheduled, posted, and recorded meeting? Technically, you could do it either way, but the okay. same way is to go through staff. Uh, that way, you know, for example, city council votes on contracts all the time. Well, those contracts are in their backup. Right. You know, and, and there's nothing wrong with them having that contract. They just haven't voted yet. So, right. But, but the staff just brings that information and keep track of it. And so if there's ever an investigation, people want to know, is there any contact that went along with that distribution? If it's through staff, you're always safe. So basically, we shouldn't contact each other in between the meetings, really. It should all go through the staff person is kind of what you're recommending. Because that's what the city clerk said, but the city attorney said some kind of something else. And it was kind of confusing at the last meeting, so I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Because we really do need to get, because it's for, I haven't, we haven't done one thing on the education committee. I mean, I feel like I'm a deer in the headlight, like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> So I'm glad you're here to get this clarified. So if we can get the meetings, if we could at least have a meeting once a month for 30 minutes and try to get our committee work done in those 30 minutes. I think what our goal is, is we have some people who are very valuable in the community who have uh, been gracious to donate their time to this commission. And hence, we want on the reciprocal end to be able to use their talents for the benefit of the public and the city. So we want to keep everybody in the loop, and I uh, presume that can be done by general information. Uh, and therefore, we want to keep the subcommittees. We don't want to bring everybody in, but we want to take certain subcommittees and make them active subcommittees and have them meet more often than just be perfunctory. There's a couple of ideas that you can uh, take advantage of. One is you could just post it, and if you get a quorum, you get a quorum, right? Then you have a meeting. If not, then you just don't have it. Uh, another thing to do is if you know when you can get together again, let's say we just had a subcommittee meeting a moment ago on, on public relations and marketing. If, if that subcommittee weren't done with their work and they wish to hold another meeting in three or four days, rather than adjourn the meeting, you would recess to a time certain. And then you can keep the meeting going. As long as you make the, the time and the place uh, that, you know, available to the public, you can just keep that going. So there's a couple ideas that you can use to keep your subcommittees moving. What you're just talking about is very important, especially if we have something that has a short time frame that maybe action will have to be taken. Right? Luann, would you guys be able to accommodate that? Though that's the other thing, because you require all this equipment. In other words, it's not easy for you guys to just go, right. oh, in three or four days we're there for you. I know you want to be. We, we'd have to look at the calendar. I know that what we did do is we went ahead and scheduled, when you request it every other week, yeah. we scheduled an hour every other week. And there's only a couple of Thursdays that we have a conflict. And what we'd have to do is probably have to change that time to maybe earlier in the day, or we can change it to another day. Um, if you're at, if you're talking about adding even more, we just have to take a look at the calendar. There are certain days that are, we have open. For instance, Mondays are very good days, hardly any meetings. And as long as you, yeah, this equipment, we only have two sets of this. So wherever, if we have a meeting going on here, we have a lot of meetings that are held down in the HR training rooms, 
then we're done. We can't have a third meeting at right. the same time. Okay. So it's good to know about Mondays. We'll, we'll talk about it more, but thank you for the clarification because I'm like thinking, these are two, the PR Marketing and Education Committee are probably two of the most active committees on this commission. The other ones will kind of come and go. And so if we have these meetings scheduled, then one or the other of us will always be able to have these meetings and that will be really valuable to get what we need to get done because this commission, if we wait to get everything done in these meetings, we wouldn't get nothing. We know we wouldn't get anything done. So. Well, we have things constantly happening now where other commissions are more specifically related to doing an action that affects something that's not requiring commissioners outside a meeting room. I think the art commissioners are a lot more out in the community in a technical sense, especially with the art, which brings up another item, since we have your expertise here today, is that sometime January, February, and I want to call it informational, we want to do maybe an informational ride-along on a bus with commissioners showing the public art around the city. Just say, here's public art, here's, we're not looking for anything of a direct vote, we're not looking for a public meeting. We can announce it as a public meeting, but usually none of our meetings are well attended anyway, but I would like to be able to set that out without necessarily having the city clerk feel like that they have to structure something. And you can. I think that one that's, you're exactly right, that's not something that ever be on the agenda. It's not something that you would ever deliberate and vote on. Right. That's just merely advertising. And if the whole commission wants to go, that's great. Um, I'd want to recommend uh, you bring somebody along as a witness because quite often somebody wants to start a discussion that might be something you're going to vote on. And, and it's always good to have somebody there to stop With that discussion. With a hall monitor. Can you back into the sure. yeah. quite accidentally, you know, so, no, not intentionally. But uh, yeah, certainly going on a trip like that is, is fine. Okay. It might be a lot of the honor to come. Yay. But you Yay. have to advertise it publicly? No. no. Okay. That's So that, that brings me to the, to the question about First Friday. If we bring all the commissioners to a booth that First Friday, would that, we're okay with that as long you as you don't You can go to discuss. anything social you want to go to. And as long as during the course of that event you don't get into something that would be subject to a vote or on your agenda. Right. right. Okay, that's that's very good. You have that typed out? I want to make sure that's on record. Okay. You feel better. Yes. Okay, I'd like to move on. Anybody, other commissioners, have any comments on this? I mean, this was something we want to see happen as we get more active, so it's very important. We appreciate your attendance on this today. Okay, moving on to the other item, number seven, discussion for pos possible action regarding the appointment of chair to the Education, Public Arts Advisory, and City Hall Subcommittee, No Physical Impacts, All Wards. Commissioner Diener, did you have any? I thought we had a couple chairs. I don't know that we have any chairs. Um, oh, okay. And I didn't email anybody to see who wanted to step up, because I, I just didn't email anybody. <laughs> so, well, we had education, and you were kind of quasi-chair. I was that. kind of faux-chair. Okay, faux-chair. Well, I can... Uh, exercise great power here and point you chair if you would so want to serve. Um, uh, candy? <laughs> <laughs> I will be right there for you. Um, <laughs> let's, let's <laughs> That's fine. We'll let's, just, I mean, we just do it together anyway. So. Okay. Well, we can have co-chairs. Co-chairs. How's that sound? I think it's a great idea. Okay. okay. Two co-chairs. Thank you very much. You want to define public arts advisory and what somebody might do? Is this something that we see as an active? It's active, but it's only really when you, if we, if somebody wants to donate a piece of artwork to the city, then the, the public art, the policy. Oh, that's what I, I serve on that. I yeah. served on that before. So that's right. only when something's being donated or something else like that's coming up. Or so. the DS, let's forget the DSS right. policies. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I actually found that very interesting. You got to see what the art was, new art, possibility of rejecting art that, you know, you have that power in making recommendations to the full commission. Um, how many do we have people on that committee? Did we have? We have Alice Denton, Steve Grogan, and Jerry Shevsek. Would you like to be chairman? It's, it's not, you get power over art. It gives you power. 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 You get to say what art you don't like, too. Oh, you might not ask. <laughs> if you would serve as chair, we will make sure it's not overburdened right. to you. Okay, yes. chair. Uh, the City Hall Subcommittee. That's uh, Chairman McCoy, myself, and Mario. 
we're kind of through that, aren't we, for most part on that we, subcommittee? We are kind of through it, yeah. Right. And Chairman McCoy is turning up, mm -hmm. unfortunately, in February. Mm. I'm dying a terrible death. <laughs> Well, let's keep let's keep that one yeah. let's keep that one open because um, I see that more as staff really talking to city employees to decide what sort of artwork they still may want on their walls. Right. And if anything comes, you could bring that before for the full commission. Sure. If there's anything nature on that. Okay. Anybody else have any? Are there any uh, committees or any other sort of uh, activities that need to be form a committee that any of the commissioners would like to take on as a burden and run with? What about the pre-qualified artist roster? Is that on our? The fast track is not on the list. It's on mm -hmm. this list. Yeah, we just maybe just skipped over. But the fast track, it, like Lisa said, said, deals with the you know helping pre-qualify the artist roster list. It's not on the agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, is it on oh. the fast track? Oh no, it's no. here, but it's, it's not on the agenda. It's on the agenda. Can we? Can we well, you want it. no. it's not on the agenda, but however, it would not be put in okay. Well, we can talk about this month, I guess. There's nothing imminent here anyway. If there's anything fast track, then we will decide if it needs a special meeting between now and the next meeting in January. If that's okay with you, Lisa. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So fast track as. A discussion. And let's also ask for commissioners see if they want to focus on anything else uh, next year as part of the agenda for the commission overall as their game plan. Okay. Any further discussion on this item? Hearing none. Let us move on to number eight. Discussion regarding holding the February 20th Arts Commission meeting at Charleston Heights Arts Center pending availability. I think this was under my direction to try and have a meeting out in the community to try and show that we're representing different wards and getting input from the city clerk's office. There were only certain areas that had the feasibility to have sound and recording capabilities. Lisa, do you have any follow-up on uh, what's happening there? The gallery is available. We would have to let people in if they wanted to come see the exhibit. Um, there's a noise issue. They have, they have classes, they have dance, they have art classes, uh, and they have a lot of open rooms. So the gallery is really the only one you can close the door. We could probably put a sign on there. People can enter if they want to. Do you it's think it's? Do you think we can hold a meeting such as this without noise problems for recording? If we shut it'll the door, it'll probably be. It'll probably be okay if we were able to close the door. Well, if I recall when we were holding our meetings at the East Las Vegas Community Center, we were right next to a dance group, and it wasn't too bad. Yeah. I think if, you know, they'll be back in the I think we're getting some help, so, yeah. I think it'll be fine. I, I know their conference room is being used, the larger conference room, which also has doors but has more space, is being used for an art class. And then they have dance classes in kind of the second conference room in the ballroom, but that is not sealed. So you're going to, all that sound's going to travel through that ballroom. So it's definitely a possibility. But if, could I interject and sure. ask a question? If we're going to do this tour now, definitely Charleston Heights needs to be on the list because that's on the agenda to talk about leads of public art there. So if it's just, to, is it just to see Charleston Heights? Or? I, I think it's actually still more, of, in my mind, it's getting out in the community and, in fact, outside of posting public notice, I would ask that our PR people prepare a press release so that we maybe could draw more of the public that don't want to come down to the city or have never been to a commission meeting so that we they get a flavor of what we do. Then can I ask Sandra Ward, whose staff works at Charleston Heights? She could probably have more input on if we had this meeting there at this time in the gallery, would we be able to hear ourselves? <laughs> Yes, it, it, it is kind of a rectangular space, not a, a yeah. square like this room. Um, I threw the idea out there uh, to Linda, um, my supervisor of the Charleston Heights Art Center, uh, the theater, um, or we could uh, move the art class to a different area. Uh, the conference room is certainly designed for this type of meeting, right. 
However, um, lots of activities. There are activities, mm -hmm. but the gallery would would serve, and also the theater would serve. We can put it on the stage, so okay. I think we can we can find spots without complicating it. As you yeah. know, I might. Would we want to have an hour before, or hour and a half before this meeting, to do our bus ride around so that it ends at Charleston Heights and therefore kind of killing, or is that? You could do that. I think it would take longer than an hour. I think okay. Well, let's I postpone that. People waiting for a meeting or something. Okay. Well, let's try the ride around. Not necessarily in January if it's cold, but sometimes between January and March, because I'd like to get the commissioners out there seeing various art things that we have going. For the bus tour. For the bus tour. And if it could work near the end of January or 1st of February, that would be fine with me. So, bus tour is separate. Okay. Um, Lisa, you'll coordinate that then? Uh, we'll put it on the January agenda for approval because we need to write buses. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there'll be a cost involved. Okay. Let's put it on the agenda. And then for the Charleston Heights Arts Center, meeting on February 20th. You'll handle that too, Lisa. Yes. And can you coordinate with Paco on a press release or how we do that, that we get a, a meeting out for that so we so that could be really see who we can bring. Hopefully nothing controversial will come up that we will be, you know, ganged up on by lots of different people. Okay, any further discussion on holding a meeting February 20th, Charleston Heights Art Center? I guess at this point what I'd like to do is uh, suggest to all commissioners that you look at the calendar for 2014 and sincerely try and make the effort to make all meetings. I know it's frustrating and it's hard in your uh, busy work days, but if you can calendar this in so we can try and achieve a, a quorum goal for each of these meetings, it would be very much appreciated. Uh, moving on, number nine. Do we at uh, Charleston Heights? Are we going to talk now at Charleston Heights, or, or is this the point? Or we? Oh, number thirteen. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Number nine. Discussion for possible action regarding an update on the education subcommittee on the public art education program. I guess I'll just jump in and just say, you know, I don't have anything. However, I think people have sent things to Lisa. I don't know now if this is the place for discussion of those things because it's not a subcommittee meeting. So, I'm not sure. Is there anything to the agenda item? On the agenda item is possible action. Right. No, oh. we, we talked about, I sent them the downtown achieves information. So, I and guess the right. of the education committee members are here. I know Glenn Candy, you are. Have you all had a chance to look at what Lisa sent? I think it was yesterday. So should we have a discussion? Then we can have a discussion. So it's not like having a little committee meeting. Sure, go for it. All right. <laughs> well, I mean, you guys jump in here, but I, I thought both of your, both what you sent, Glenn, and what you sent, Kenny, were terrific. And I think we can easily do that and incorporate it into the downtown achieves. I think it's easy to do that. So if you guys want to talk a little bit more about it. I think the question is, uh, Glenn, you, you, yours was high school level. And maybe yours was a little more amorphous, but we could maybe start out with high school level and move it down into K through. So there's two high schools in downtown Chiefs. Um, what I had mentioned at the last full uh, full committee uh, meeting was um, mirroring what the Arts Commission does to what uh, UNLV has in place with the Arts Bridge. Um, Arts Bridge targets uh, at-risk elementary and middle school. Um, and what the commission might do is look at um, partnering with local public artists and uh, identifying which high schools who would like to integrate public art into other curricular activities um, and just kind of model model our potential program after a system that, that it works yeah it does a does a nice job so you guys are looking at residencies basically uh, kind of that in a way i think what what, what you had suggested was to draft a letter a template letter uh, and see what the would look like so uh, Jerry, I don't, you may not have had a chance to read these. Yeah. 
Um, well, I think we're going to have a meeting in two weeks if the clerk's office can get it on the calendar. Maybe we could all disseminate this information and come at the next meeting in two weeks with yays or nays or tweaking. But I think it's a, I think it's terrific. It's really a great idea. Because why reinvent the wheel? The, the formats are there. The things are there. We could still work with Downtown Achieve, still do what you're talking about. Just target those schools. Yeah. Which is, um, and and it's voluntary on their part, you know, whether they choose to. Or, um, and I'm bridging with you on OB. I like that. That's great. So, does that sound good to the committee? And if we know if we have a limited dollar amount, right. and indeed we're talking residencies, maybe we just go with the Arts Bridge mm -hmm. format. Um, if we have one school that accepts, or if we have two schools that accept, um, depending on budget, or if we have four schools, there's two middle schools in that um, Downtown Chiefs group, as well as the two high schools and the seven middle schools. I mean, some of them were mm -hmm. So if it goes, if the budget would stretch um, and both high schools would accept, or if one high school and one middle school would accept, um, I would think that's about as far as our budget would go at this moment. We could um, see NAP funding, residency, the residency, sure. we, there's other options, but I think we're on the right track. Mm -hmm. So in the essence of time, maybe this is what we just hone in the meeting in two weeks from now. We come up with the template letter and we're on down the road because you had indicated that if we get this done now, it'll be ready to go in time for the 2014 fall semester, right? Potentially, yeah. I that don't would know be how cool. far in CCSD plans, but yeah. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Jerry, you got anything? No, I'm somewhat familiar with the Archbishop program and it's worked well at the university. I mean, you need somebody to, to head it, coordinate it, make sure. People get in the classes, but yeah, I think that would be a good format. Very good. Right, but as our director, we'll, we'll clean it up in two weeks. We'll wind up with a, a firm report at the following our meeting. Okay, then let's stress that we'll have a formal report at the January meeting from the Education Subcommittee. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Okay, number 10, discussion for possible action regarding an update by the PR and Marketing Subcommittee. Uh, Sub-Chair Paco. Thank you, Commissioner Grogan. Uh, we had a good meeting right before uh, this meeting to discuss uh, different thoughts and ideas of how um, we can really engage the community through um, whether it's uh, social media, through the press, uh, really putting together a, a, uh, a plan uh, so that we can move forward in, uh, in you know, getting people to know who we are. Everything from Twitter to Facebook was discussed, uh, engaging you know, other arts organizations, uh, and also ultimately uh, telling, maybe even going to First Friday and participating there. I uh, had mentioned at the last commission meeting that uh, I'll be curating a First Friday, and uh, we were hoping that it was a nice month, and I am excited to announce that it will be in one of our uh, uh, in the middle of the summer in July, so very excited about that. I'll make sure that, that they bring ice and air conditioners. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Commissioner Grogan had suggested that I reach out to, uh, to First Friday see if we can do a test run uh, in May. So I will do that. Uh, just to set up a booth there, have a banner, and say, hey world, we're an arts commission, we do exist. One of the big challenges that we've had is that a lot of people don't know that we even exist. Uh, and that uh, we're not uh, really engaging enough with the arts community. Um, you know, it was brought up uh, a couple of months ago about the Life is Beautiful uh, event that took place in downtown, which was very successful. It was, it was a great, great two days, lots of um, music and food and art, some artwork on your building, yeah. And uh, we, you know, we, we didn't participate, and why couldn't we have participated in that? Why didn't we go out there? I mean, we, a lot of us were there, but uh, you know, we could have had a, a hotel room to decorate and, or to have a presence there. And so really trying to be proactive in, in what we do with the community so the community knows that we exist. So. Okay. Does anybody else from the commission have any comments or any suggestions that they'd like to see on PR, marketing, otherwise, to bring the community's attention to the Art Commission. 
I think what will be important in, in terms of when I talk to people, I had a meeting today about one of the pieces of art in one of our buildings, um, and I brought up talking about the art, I said it's going to be coming to the Arts Commission, and I think a common, mis whether it's a misconception or it's a truth, I think what people think is that engaging the art community will take, will like entail a lot of bureaucracy and a lot of problems and will slow the process down. So I think that communicating that we're an easy group to work with, that we're accommodating, and it may or may not, you know, that it may not slow the process down, but it will be easy to work with the Arts Commission. Um, that will be an important message because maybe some people know that it exists, but I think they associate, you know, it being a bureaucratic organization. So I think that will be something to consider. I was just sort of there, and I think you're absolutely right. And you know, for the most part, it is. <laughs> it's what we offer. Of course, But um, I think that when we, it comes to like the issues with the murals and things, it's like, you know, there was no public money in those murals. So everybody had the right to do kind of what they wanted with those murals. Had this commission been involved and put money in those murals, it would have, would have been a whole different story. So I just think that that bears understanding too. I think it would be great to partner, it would be great to do in those rooms, but when it comes to public art, know full well that this, all the VARA, the VAR Act, the Federal Act of 1991 comes with it. So, you know, it's complicated, it is complicated, it's great. It's meant to be a lot in the public right of way. Um, but um, as long as we bear all that in mind, I think it's all really exciting. I agree with you, we should be a part more of it. I, th I, I think with the first Friday as an example is, uh, a couple of things that I could see happening is, one, we have, not that we have handouts, but we have brochures or handouts to explain that we do have a site for artists to go to if they want to be part of the system in case there is public art or there's a commission that the city will do that there's that to do. We could have the brochure prepared at the time showing if you want to take a, public, a walk to see public art or drive to some public art, here's a little brochure showing it. And then as we get in the later, and the fact, as you said, we are bureaucratic in a way, the fact that somebody wants, which again is a city thing that we have to address through the city sometime, if somebody wants to contribute art to the city, we do need to have a formalized thing. If you, you know, especially because we have these artists who suddenly turn around and say, "Well, I have this art. Here's the city." Well, that's why we have our our our, our exactly. advisory policies. Right, and I think that should be there because it doesn't say we don't want the art. It just what the policy is if somebody wants to give it. So that's something where we can disseminate information as a first Friday. And yes, I think we should participate in Life Is Beautiful or volunteer our services in some area. We should definitely be leaders in our community, and and I know that we like to say we're bureaucratic. Um, we need to break away from that and tell the public, you know, the city's here to facilitate, not dictate. So it's really important that uh, we break that. So, you know, people are worried that we are bureaucratic. We've got a problem here. We need to be much more proactive with our community. Um, others are going to be left left behind because right now the city's moving so quickly. So many private entities are, are, are doing such great things as far as mm -hmm. art is concerned in the community. And, you know, we should be facilitating them. We should be helping them. We should be cheerleading them. You know, really being the leaders. I mean, because the Arts Commission has been the leader for so many years. And we still want to be relevant moving forward. And we want to, you know, we definitely want to make it easier for people to approach us and say, hey, look, you know, we don't know what we're doing, but we need some help. And so that's why we're here. I think that's a play. perfect role for the commission. It's an advisory role. Perfect yeah. role mm -hmm. for the commission. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can include that on the website as you update the website, too. It's how to donate. Of the website. I'd like to just say, you know, we put out a press release. We did on the chair and mm -hmm. we did the photograph. I don't know that it ever got printed anywhere. I have because no they idea. sometimes get printed and sometimes they don't. You know, it's just like you put it out there to see it's not there all the time, and sometimes they stick and sometimes they don't. But we're putting the photo on the Arts Las Vegas website. We're going to try to get it on the Arts Commission's website. So we're we're gonna get it out there through our channels. Just FYI on that. Okay. Anybody else have any comments or discussion? Saying that we're easy to work with, I think is real good. And Paco's right, that's our goal. But now talking that we are bureaucratic, on to the next item, which is bureaucratic. Uh, I'd like to draw attention to the discussion for possible action number 11 regarding review of the Arts Commission, the accession policy. 
which establishes guidelines for the rotation disposition of current artwork, uh, no physical impact, Lisa. Do you have comments on that? Uh, well, we sent a draft to the city attorney's office, so they are reviewing it. It's not ready yet. Um, but we should have something by next meeting, hopefully, to vote on, and we'll be on our way. So. Okay. That's fine. I just remember in our, our advisory for acquisition, we had some art that came to us that just was not anything the city would probably want to have that was it was too current and it didn't have any place in the in the system so we wanted the way to be able to refuse it politely without getting in trouble well um, we'll have to figure out if we can have a subcommittee meeting and then approve the deaccession policies and then deaccession <laughs> you know what I mean if we, if we can do that all next month kind of okay uh, because, yeah, there's four pieces that we need to decide what to do with, for sure. Um, like the Mona Lisa mural. Uh, it's it's going to be impacted by renovations down the road. So uh, There's some things sitting there that need to be addressed. Um, okay, so. These are already in possession of the city, yeah. yeah. They're part of the city's collection. So then we might then schedule for action you would disseminate to the subcommittee of the advisory committee the deaccession policy to review, and then we'd have a subcommittee and maybe at one of those committee slots between now and January, and then perhaps bring it up so we can formalize it at the January meeting. Okay, let's put it on the agenda for next January for action. It puts us under pressure to get a policy in place, so I think that's good. We do have a policy for accepting artwork, right? We do, and we started on deaccession policy, so um, you know, we just have to. We've never had really deaccessioning issues until recently. Okay. But accepting, yeah, uh, that's where we have that policy. Okay. Any other comments? Any other input from commissioners on this issue? Any thoughts? If not, moving on to number 12, discussion for possible action regarding review of the Arts Commission letter of support for the National Endowment of the Arts, our town grant. You have a letter in your, yeah. but I'm replacing it with this one. Uh-uh. Okay. New version. The county asked that we include a letter that talks about our financial commitment to the grant, so we revised it. So here's the here's the revised one. It's very similar. Please take a moment and to read through this. If there's going to be no objections to this letter, I would be signing as chairman at the end of the meeting. So our total contribution is 19000 That includes in-kind. Yes, they used a staff salary and the 10000 cash. And we took out that center paragraph kind of explaining other things that we had been doing as part of the... Yeah, we have letters from the city manager and the mayor that include all that language. Oh, okay. Okay. Does anybody have any questions or comments on that? If not, I don't know if this requires possible action since the letter. Okay, then I would move the acceptance by the commissioners of this letter and uh, directing the chairman to si sign the letter on behalf of the commission. So moved. It's been moved. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. I will sign this at the end of the meeting. Okay, moving on to number 13. Uh, possible for discussion, discussion for possible action regarding updates for the new public artwork at the Charleston Heights Arts Center. So at the last commission meeting, this came up, um, we had some interest from our councilwoman Tartini and this Charleston Heights Arts Center is in the award and they've replaced all the trees out front. It's starting to look really much better out there and there was an interest in possibly donations of public art to the building. 
Uh, I did pursue one donation of public art, an artist said they, he was willing to donate, but it turned out he was actually was only willing to loan his work, but his work is so heavy, it would talk, take a lot of money to install and then take it out. So we're not going down that path, but in addition to that, um, I did bring you Sandra Ford, who's sitting over there, uh, had come up with some ideas, and, and Sandra is a visual artist along with a very talented visual artist along with Staffy, Charleston Heights Art Center, and she came up with some ideas for public art, and you all looked at them, and we all did kind of like them. I'll pass them around again. I think there was some interest in possibly in the tile, this tile piece. Um, I'll pass them around that way. So anyway, I thought maybe Sandra could come and talk a little bit more. She actually brought some pieces of tile to look at. If you have any questions, um, I did let the council women know we were we were looking at other possible tile projects in the face of that project. So what I'd like to do, if there is interest from the commission to move forward with possibly a tile project, uh, that maybe next at the next commission meeting we come in with um, a cost and. Now, is this tile going to be out of reach by children? I'd like Sandra to talk Sandra. about that. Sandra. Why don't you come up and have a seat? Sure. Oh, okay. Um, just because that sample was very small, I, I just made a similar one, but kind of large in case. I know there are lots of visual people um, here. But uh, one of the ideas um, I was approached with, um, getting my thinking cap on, is to help the community and people passing by know a little bit more about uh, what's going on in the center by having some actual artwork on the outside. Um, so I just uh, came up with just very quickly, and, and these thoughts are not original, I'm sure any one of you could have thought of them, but um, this idea here uh, seemed to get a little bit of traction. Uh, the tiling, um, there are three different options, of course, when you do a mural um, using tile, you can uh, create uh, kind of a second skin, like what we do on our bathroom floors, uh, using maybe um, prefabricated tiles. You could have tiles custom made, like the samples that are uh, circulating. Um, and also you can have tiles that are a relief. Um, and then another option is you can have some negative space. Uh, mixed in with a, a mural. So you wouldn't necessarily need to create a full second coating. You can just have sections of a column, like say for example, uh, the large negative space areas ne wouldn't necessarily have tiles on them. So there's a lot of variations in using um, tile uh, to create a mural. Another uh, option is to have uh, bisque tiles and paint on them, uh, glazes, so uh, it wouldn't necessarily have to all be molded and then glazed a uh, certain color. You can have different color fields, like say you want to do a circle motif, you can have every circle be a different color. And then um, the another option is to personalize it. So um, from the street, you would have something visually appealing. Uh, Walking up, you could see that maybe there's some relief or some kind of uh, texture. And then even up close, if, as you see in the examples, uh, you could personalize uh, each tile. And you could have maybe musical notes or people dancing or any kind of words that you would like to have in, in there. And that could lend itself to some community involvement, uh, not just from the artist, but maybe um, the community could be uh, involved in uh, personalizing tiles if you were going that route. So um, there are um, many ways to, to go about it and um, sky's the limit, but there are some definite uh, uh, murals in the past that we can use as examples and, and also uh, knowing the surface area, we're able to come up with some, some costs to help guide uh, the the commission. So I guess what, what I kind of would like to know is, is does the commission have a, feel, a strong feeling one or the other, or, or do, maybe we can come back at the next meeting. Should we go the direction of a tile mural? Do any of you think this is just a bad idea in general? Should we look at a piece of sculpture, which would be more costly? My thoughts were, 
you want to see it quickly from the street. I mean, the, the building's really nice, but it could use something. It definitely could use some it. Oomph. Right. Some oomph. Some oomph. You know, of all the projects I think that we've done in my time on the commission, I think my absolute favorite is the mosaic tile piece yeah, that we commissioned for East Las Vegas. Yeah. It's my favorite piece. And I think this fits into that genre. Yeah. And um, I, I think it's a great idea and a great use. I'm a fan of that piece. I was there when they uh, installed it. And um, I do know that the artist left behind uh, boxes of tiles in case there were mm -hmm. problems uh, with the tiles. You know, someone backing up into it. You never know, car accidents. And um, that's a potential for, for something like this, too. So would it be all right then if we put on the agenda the next time for action and vote um, a concept and a budget so we can actually move forward with it? And in this fiscal year, it would be nice to do. Sounds like the right thing to do. I'd say yes, and that, I think that column lends itself to yeah. be a sculpture. Um, I think it's structurally it's there. I just like and I mentioned to you in that last meeting, whispered that bench um, that people use. I think that could be part of it. Part of it as yeah. well. There's a lot of potential um, for growth. Yeah, There's I just a like that courtyard, that Those horizontal one, and that vertical. Mm -hmm. and the theme together. can yeah. extend all the way through. And one of my coworkers mentioned something about a, a legacy courtyard. People could um, sponsor tiles, or you could commemorate certain areas to. It's, it just lends itself endlessly to possibilities. There's some beautiful trees right in that little adjacent area. I have photos of that area if you want to look at that, that as well. But there are many sites, as you can tell. Those are just four ideas. And I'm sure with uh, noodling it out, we could come up with right. many more things. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody, is it all right for me to ask if anybody here would like to work on this with myself and city staff person Sandra? If not, we're fine, we can do it, but some of you may have an interest in just checking in with us. It's fine. I think doing, doing the tile and, and doing something on the building still doesn't preclude you from running across a statue down the road. Oh, right. No, it does so not. Somebody wants to donate, so that right. leaves that open to keep adding art to the building and around the building. Oh, yeah. And so. you can choose it. I mean, there's places for, for sculpture here as well. I'm not, uh, my only concern, I like the idea of even doing something on the bench, my only concern is the vandalism, and especially on tile, I keep going by signs along the side of the road that have been pried up by doing that. So if it could be up high or however, painted down below and then turned to tile as it goes up. Well, like Sandra said too, though, at East Las Vegas, the, the artist left tiles yeah. for that. And there's not been a great deal of vandalism. I, I, Sandra, when you were out, she was out there, that she worked in that facility, was there a lot of vandalism? Um, for the years that I lived with the, uh, the sculpture at East Las Vegas as my work site, uh, the only damage that I ever heard of it was a close scrape from a city vehicle or something like that. Uh, you know, it, it was near the gates. So you had to ask. You know, uh, <laughs> a lot of times, the because of the way those columns, uh, I'll call them columns, uh, was, 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 the sculptures, people walk amongst them, and that's a corner people cut all the time because there's nothing uh, stopping them. So uh, to my knowledge, um, that was the only, and then some issue with the ground floor lighting was probably the only other issue I've ever heard of with that uh, sculpture. Um, but uh, as far as uh, vandalism, um, Lisa had mentioned uh, something in passing once about the um, surface being treated, treatable, the graffiti code or something of that. Is that, is that correct? You, I, I would see if you could put it on just to protect the grouting, but, you know, tiles, you can't get more durable regarding public art. Just, you Any know, chance. if you hired Denise Duart to replace those tiles, you wouldn't even know they were mm. damaged. So just plan ahead. Well, since this is uh, kind of on the interest and direction of Councilwoman Tarkanian, and it seems like it not necessarily needs to be fast-tracked, but at least by the next agenda if we have a budget. We have a budget and a proposal. May I have a motion on that from somebody? So moved. Okay. Thank There's you. been a motion uh, for the next agenda to have this, have this on the agenda with a budget and perhaps a little bit more specific concept in mind. Okay. Uh, since we have a motion, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? The motion is hereby approved. Moving on to number 14. 
on the agenda, report for possible action regarding funding for temporary illumination of the public artwork, Nefili, located in the lobby of the City of Las Vegas Development Service Center. Uh, percent for the art is $3,000. We have discussion on that. Well, I'm out with my talk on costumes from the Palace Lighting and the artist Sid Bam. Uh, we've looked at different options and how to light this temporarily uh, because it is fairly dark in there. Uh, we decided that it was going to be somewhat difficult to do that because we'd have to run electrical across hallways. So uh, we played around a little bit with the existing lights. We're going to try and get another light fixture fixed because the light was out on there. The uh, short story is that we're going to try and get a couple extra spotlights on it before the reception. So I think we're nixing the temporary lighting idea and just uh, seeing if we can get a few spotlights because they've done that for our galleries where they drop some spots out of existing fixtures and hopefully our electrical engineer can do that for us rather quickly the, the reception is until the 28th so of January so so that's the plan the only advantage that that piece has is it's very bright colors yes. so yes. it's not as if it's sort of deep and in the mud to begin with. So It just needs a couple washes of light and some spots. So just, to, you know, we, we kind of enhanced what was there and uh, Todd felt very optimistic we can do it relatively, uh, I won't say cheaply, but with the reasonable. resources that we have in a reasonable way. We didn't want to dramatically, theatrically light it and then give some kind of impression when we got the permanent lighting that it was going to be that way permanently. So um, just just wasn't really practical for temporary. So we're going to shoot for permanent. So and the staff is recommending at least a budget of $3,000. I would hope that would cover five or six spotlights. I hope so. Um, if we need additional funding, uh, I guess I can ask in January uh, to cover that. So. Prior to the January 28th event. Prior you'll, to the January You'll have a test before then, no. So you. Oh, I wasn't able to talk to the city's electrical engineer. He's not available until January. So this is an outside contractor that do He's it? He's the city's it? only electrical engineer. So the 3000 comes from our That'll budget to their budget, or is it? That'll be the purchase supplies. So okay. We'll charge you gotcha. charge that. It'll be okay. Um, any further discussion on this item? Uh, I would hope that everyone does attend, make a point to attend on January 28th from noon to 2 p.m. when this will be held. Um, we want to probably draw attention to that also as a public event to show that we are doing public art in the community. Um, Do you want to approve this question yes. and then I can update it? Yes. Uh, therefore, we need a motion for the approval of $3,000 uh, for the lighting uh, for temporary illumination or permanent illumination on the public artwork to Feely. Do I hear a motion to that effect? I'll make a motion. Pac, Chairman Alvarez makes a motion. Uh, chairperson. Um, therefore, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? This motion hereby passes, and we'll get a report in the January meeting on how that looks, that lighting looks. Let me move on to item number 15, and I will read this. Citizens' participation. Public comment during the portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the commission. No subject may be acted upon by the commission unless that subject is on the agenda and scheduled for action. You wish to be heard, give your name for the record, the amount of discussion on any single subject, as well as the amount of time any single speaker may be allowed, allowed, may be limited. Do I hear anybody in the audience who would like to speak? Okay, therefore no one in the public is uh, desiring to speak. I narrow, move on to the next I item. Uh, I ask any commissioners, any remarks for the order from the commissioners on any items that we've had on the agenda today that may have been overlooked. Hearing none, I move for adjournment. Do I hear a motion to that effect? So moved. There's been a motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. aye.